What's going on, everybody? It's Big Ace here. It's another edition of the Briscoe and Big Ace Show, episode six. See it? Holy moly, we've made it to six already? We have uh, made it to six already. Catching up with a lot of stuff, too. It's amazing how much stuff we've covered in five episodes. I know, it's really crazy. And just the uh, broad spectrum of stuff that we've been able to capture and talk about has been actually kind of cool because, you know, when we started this thing, we were like, we want it to be about wrestling, but we also wanted to have other content. We just didn't want to stick to the typical wrestling podcast. And I think we've done a pretty good job of covering everything. Yeah, I really do uh, think we have. Uh, by the way, how was your New Year, though? I mean, uh, we took a little time off to either celebrate Christmas, which we did, and now New Year's. We are officially in 2019. We dropped our last episode on the 1st to kick it off right, but how was your New Year's? Did you do anything crazy? Man, to be honest with you, I had a really mellow New Year's, and it was actually really fun because I went to my buddy's beach house, and we basically sat there and did fireworks on the beach, and then just kind of just hung out the beach. Nothing too crazy. I got to surf the day before uh, New Year's, and I got to surf New Year's Day. So I got to surf uh, in 2018, and I got to bring in 2019 with a nice little surf set, and uh, the waves weren't too big. It was but we were just on the long boards, just having fun. And it was a really good time, but it was really mellow. I didn't really like rage or go out or do anything crazy. It was, it was really, really chill. I like a chill. That's what I'm all about. Holidays need to be chill for me, man. Mine actually worked, so it wasn't really any fun. I saw some of your posts, though, from your New Year's. Did you say you guys got the shut down on your fireworks? Well, we were on the beach. And so this was the craziest thing. Technically, you're not allowed to do fireworks on the beach, but when there's the whole beach from one side of the beach to as far as you can see to the other side is all doing fireworks, it's kind of hard to like bust people. So like they were trying to bust people, but there's only one beach patrol. So they only have one beach patrol working and there's no way that one beach patrol is going to, they were mainly looking for kids that were underage drinking. I believe, I don't really think they were looking because they rolled up next to me and I had a ton of fireworks and they were like, Oh, he's old. We'll just drive past. And I was like, man, I'm getting old when the cops just drive past me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I sure. I was like, Oh, they're going to stop me. You know, guy, full, big jacked up guy, full of tattoos, you know, but no, they kept on rolling. But uh, yeah, they were trying to shut down people. But we still had a blast. We still lit off a ton of fireworks and just had a blast. I mean, we cooked a lot of food. I mean, we cooked like a feast. It was really good. I, I enjoyed this New Year's. It was a good time. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it, uh, to kick the New Year's off, unfortunately, was it this past Wednesday? And we're recording this right now on a Monday. It was sad to see that a wrestling legend and Hall of Famer, uh, Mean Gene Okerlund, passed away. Uh, you've had personal experiences with Mean Gene. Yeah, I've actually known Mean Gene since oh, since I was born. I've known him a really long time, and uh, he's just a really stand-up guy. I mean, all around, just willing to help you in any way, willing to just to take time. If you asked him, he would sit down and you know go over interviews with you and just try to help any of the young talent. And that's one thing that I always remember from him is that he's always had an open door to like, want to talk about any type of wrestling or just want to talk about anything. He never was too good to like talk to you. It didn't matter if you were on the bottom of the food chain all the way to the top. He always had a couple of minutes just to hang out and talk. <clears throat> yeah, it was really sad to see that he uh, was gone. So many of my childhood memories watching wrestling revolve around mean gene because because i mean when you're a kid you're fascinated by what's happening in the ring but i don't know maybe it was just me but as a kid too growing up the mystique and the the awe of watching these gigantic titans and uh, doing what they do in the world of wrestling was watching them on the on the on the backstage interview segments and listening to them talk you know hearing hulk do the whole you know take your uh, vitamins say your prayers and all that and like all those catchphrases all that stuff all like it was all happening and mean gene was right there next to it you know what i mean he's a part of so many just legendary moments and just nice guy what about the chemistry he had with bobby heenan 
some of the stuff that it, they did together was just phenomenal. I mean, some of the fondest memories of just his backstage interviews with him and Andre and Mean Gene and Bobby Heenan. It, it's just phenomenal. I mean, just he interviewed everybody and he just had his own certain swagger about his interviews that just made it his own and the best part is when you watch all of his bloopers and stuff yeah, yeah, some yeah, of yeah. the bloopers when he's yelling at the wrestlers like come on now like get it together it just cracks me up yeah i love the whole i love one of my favorites is him and macho man and oh macho yeah. man does his spiel starts to walk away but yeah. macho man, one more question no more questions and just keeps <laughs> walking like i just crack up because you know he was probably like what no come back here but yeah. just hilarious. Yeah, it's sad. Sad as uh, sad again. Sad to see a a legendary Hall of Famer like that pass. Uh, oh, man, luckily, we're in an age though where everything he did is so accessible that for generations to come, people can always look back and be like, "No, you want to see who the true like OG was that was interviewing these guys and had a stellar voice for that stuff and for all the promos and the uh, voiceover work he's done for the network, even up till the not recently." I mean that that's that's being Gene right there, and it's it's cool that that'll live on. But I know, and it's crazy. His legacy is just—he probably has one of the best legacies you could ever think of. I mean, just when you think about all the people he's got to interview, everywhere he's gone, all the stuff that he's done and creative, and you know, he is definitely, you know one of the wrestling gods and will mm -hmm. always be, you know, on that Mount Rushmore, as we would say it, of the people you would always remember from your childhood, even to current days. Like you said, doing all that work for WWE, like doing all that, you know, voiceover stuff for the network, that's stuff that's going to live forever. And I think yeah. he really paved his past and I, he did one hell of a job and he's up on that Mount Rushmore to definitely he's the top 10 of who's who in wrestling. Oh, for sure. Especially people who were just personalities, not necessarily an actual active wrestler. Uh, yeah, you know, I consider just, him straight up with the boys. Everything. Yeah. You know, he is considered a wrestler. He, in my book, he is, you know, definitely. He's, he's, and, he's you know, a lot of people feel that way too. That's why uh, Raw tonight's going to be pretty special. That sounds like Ric Flair going to be coming back tonight to do some sort of Woo! tribute. And also, kind of raise some eyebrows. It's, it's Hogan is apparently going to show up on raw tonight to do a tribute as well to mean gene we were talking about this this is the first time hogan's gonna be like on wwe tv since them being like okay we're not gonna work with you anymore after all that stuff came out with the gawker deal and those tapes and the phone calls and the words he was using all that kind of stuff and uh you know, there's still a lot of people in the wrestling world who are really divided on this, especially when it comes to the racial slurs that were recorded of him saying. Uh, and you look at the the communities backstage and some people, uh, you know, have not gotten over that. He came to Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel is one of those crowds, though, where they're not probably hip to that full story. So they're going to be like, oh, it's Hulk Hogan. Yay. I feel like Kermit the Frog. Yay. You know, and so they're not that hip to it where they're going to cheer them. Tonight, it might well, be a little different. It's going to be I'm, interesting to see the reaction. Yeah, that's, you know, like you said, me too. You know, like, I'm really interested to see their reaction and what they're going to do and how they're going to, how the crowd's going to react to them, you know. That's something that it's going to be really cool to see. And, you know, we're going to have to definitely talk about that in, uh, next week to see what his reaction is and i want to know you guys's reaction you know hit us up tell us what you think about seeing uh hogan back on raw you know we want to hear your uh input too on this whole whole ordeal you know let us know what you think about it well yeah because also if it goes well tonight very heavy talk i guess from what i've read uh you know now you, everybody knows how reliable the internet can be when it comes to just reading dirt yeah. sheets but there is a lot of heavy talk that NWO in the next, either this year or in the next coming couple of years here, are are due for a Hall of Fame induction, which would be the three, you know, the three original, including Hollywood Hogan. So uh, maybe this is them trying to ease him back in, start getting people used to seeing him around again, because now that we're 
I, I think the Rumble's this next week, isn't it? Am I mistaken? Or we got two, either this week or next week. Uh, we're on that road to WrestleMania, so it's time to start getting stuff ready and in people's minds. So let's start bringing them in. And, and, and you know, if that NWO thing is going to work out for the Hall of Fame, we'll be seeing a lot more of them. Yeah, and, you know, it's crazy because I've known Hogan my whole life. My dad and my uncle were the ones that trained him. My dad and my uncle were the guys that gave his first pair of wrestling boots and his first $100 bill was my dad and my uncle. My dad and my uncle trained Hogan and pretty much found him. So I've known Hogan my whole entire life. And, it, it, and of course, I've worked with them in my times in TNA. I mean, I've had some some crazy stories about Hogan of like me just getting able to hang out with them. And like, I remember one time me and, uh, drew, um, doc, uh, drew from, um, the bullet club. We were sitting there and we're like, we saw Hogan kind of sitting in one of the chairs by the ring. And we're like, dude, we gotta go talk to him. And at the time that was back in the time when I actually did smoke, I don't smoke anymore, but at the time I did smoke and I was like, Hey guys, like me and Drew were like, let's ask him about smoking weed. We want to hear about like some crazy stories. So like we started sitting next to uh, the holster and just started talking with them and we're like, Hey man. And he just like brought it up and about how he used to get really high and go train <laughs> and just like all this funny stuff. And we're like, we were looking at each other and we're like, we can't believe we're talking to Hogan about smoking. It's now, one of the craziest stories ever. Would- like just sit in there and like, we talked for like a couple hours and, like, I've always known him, and I've always talked to him, but I've never talked to him like that. Like, I never got to talk to him, like, personal. Like, I've talked to him a hundred million times, but never, like, sat next to him and had, like, a really in-depth, like, one-on-one kind of, like, personal conversation with him, which, you know, it was pretty fun. Like, we talked about working out. We talked about taking your vitamins. We talked about, you know, just certain workouts we did and, like – it, it was really cool because he literally sat there for an hour with us and just, you know, bullshit with us. And that was one of the coolest, uh, like, cause I, like I said, I've known Hogan my whole entire life and I've talked to him my whole entire life. He's been to my house. I've been to his house. I've been to his birthday parties, like all that stuff. And like, actually one of his birthday parties, uh, um, Teddy Hart and, um, uh, David Boy Smith stayed at my house because, uh, my parents were like, oh, you know, all the guys were going to go out party. And so my mm-hmm. mom took all the little, little kids back to my house. And those were two of the boys that stayed at my house. And we had a, like a slumber party. And it was a really good time. But nice. yeah, I'm really interested on seeing Hogan's reaction and, you know, what what the people are going to react to Hogan be out there. And, you know, it's not really about Hogan, which the people really need to realize. And I understand all the stuff he said and. You know, I don't agree with the stuff he says because I don't believe in color. I don't believe in none of that stuff. I believe we all believe the same color, which is red, and we all family. You know, in my eyes, I don't, I don't, I see past. I don't care if you're purple, blue, green, yellow, whatever. We all family to me. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm really just interested to see what's gonna, what's gonna transpire or what's gonna happen. And like I said, the it's not about Hogan tonight. And that's what people really need to realize. Right. It's about Hogan remembering Mean Gene, which Hogan spent a lot of time with Mean Gene because at the time that was when Hogan was at his prime. That was when Mean that was who interviewed him, and right. he's given respect to his friend, which the people need to realize. It's not like oh, it's all about Hogan. No, it's not about him. It's about him showing respect and giving respect to someone that he personally idolized and gave respect for. And Hogan being such a big influence in the business, I feel it's right that he is able to give him the platform to give his respect. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, definitely needs to be more about Mean Gene and people need to remember that and not just be like, Hogan's back on uh, Raw tonight. But uh, that's crazy. When you say, now, when you say Doc, are you referring to is it Luke Gallows? Yeah, Luke Gallows. Okay, just so in case anybody needed that clarification, because uh, he actually does an amazing impersonation of Hogan. Yeah, he yeah he's pretty funny guy, but uh, we'll move on from him. <laughs> but yeah, so it's uh, yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if it'll be any more interesting though. Like 
we talk about Hogan coming on there, but there's some pretty big things that were being talked about over the weekend as well. We had the new year. You got college football uh, playoffs and all that going on. Okay. So about the college football guys, we got one of them, right? One, one out of what well, they gave us uh, two, two different games and we got one of the games, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're, we're 50, 50 on the game calling here guys. So we're pretty up to par on that. So if you guys want to, you know, take your bets in Vegas, hit the Briscoe and Big H. So you have to – the only way we're going to do this, if you hit the subscribe button and hit a like, and then we're going to give you the uh, top secret uh, college football or pro football information. But, yeah, did you see this? This was pretty funny. This is against the Texas Longhorns and the Georgia Bulldogs. Which so a game Texas, that we didn't get right. Yeah, the, yeah, we messed up on that one. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about the ones we mess up on. We're only talking about the ones we do good on. All right. But the one we messed up on has the best story. Oh, yes. I mean, totally. I mean, comeback hero, you know. But uh, no, not even that. So, what you're about to say beats the comeback story. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, it wasn't really a comeback. I think they kind of squashed Notre Dame. But uh, this is the most funniest thing. So, guys, I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. So the mascot for Texas is a Longhorn Bull because they're called the Texas Longhorns. And the mascot for Georgia is, of course, the Bulldog because they're called the Georgia Bulldogs. So one, they were walking both mascots before the game right next to each other. And guess what happens? Did you see it, Ace? I saw it. Yeah, that bull definitely <laughs> thought he was, like, getting, like, rodeo time or something. He was kicking to get out of that fence. And that poor little bulldog which they had in a red shirt, which was sitting in front of the see, gate. that was where they messed up. Oh, my God. Did they not see all the cartoons when you were younger? You do Yo, not Looney have Tunes red on in front of a right. bull. For, Looney oh. Tunes got it right. Like that, I saw that. Like Right when I see the bull like try to get out of the gate at fence season, I'm like, well, yeah, look, look at the little like, dog. has oh, got a red shirt on. He's just sitting there. Ace, did you see that fence? Come on, that oh. fence. Oh my, like that was not even a fence. Like, what were they thinking? Well, and it could have been so much worse because what if he sort of would have started just flipping the handlers? Yeah, like that's the thing. He didn't go after good. anybody but the dog. But what if he yeah. would have turned on those handlers? Yeah, been that would have been insane. Yeah, that was <laughs> something. So, if you guys want to check out that clip on YouTube, it's all over the internet. It's definitely something to watch, and you'll get a kick out of it. It's pretty funny. Made me laugh and made me smile, but it's definitely something you want to check out. Yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty entertaining. Uh, we also had some football over the weekend. Uh, NFL football playoffs have begun. I'm a huge Cowboys fan. I think you know that. If you don't, now you know. So well, for I mean, me... Huh? Look, at your hat. Look at your hat. Come on now. Look at I had hat. to wear it. I had to wear it. I, I, by no means am I that guy. I, I'd never come into a season saying we're winning shit because I just know we're probably not going to. The fact that we won a playoff game this year is already amazed me. So if we lose the next one, I'm good because I got uh, the better little... than the Bears. <sighs> yeah. Here's the so, funny thing. First of all, though, like, yeah, I'm so I'm super pumped. Everybody, if you're a Cowboys fan, let us know and uh, we can talk about it Saturday, whatever it was. <laughs> but like, did you see I think it was Alan Hearns. Did you see him break his ankle on the field during that Cowboy game? Like legit snap. I was traveling. I didn't get to see it. Oh, my God. It was like, like you remember when Sid Vicious jumps off the ring and his leg just snaps? <gasps> Like that, but it was his oh. ankle. Oh, like was it was bad. And it was also the first time I've ever seen where, you know, teams are on their knees waiting to see because he obviously got stretchered. He wasn't going nowhere. Yeah. But it was the first time that I saw like the benches on both sides cleared to go to his little car and like give him a high five or handshake as he was. It was really cool to see because you don't usually you see the people on the field do it, but like people were coming off their benches on both teams. Well, to be like, you know, because when they show the replay, oh, my God. Oh. Mm. Oh, just a clean snap. Ugh. Nasty. Yeah. But, yeah, the other thing with football is crazy because my uh, – speaking of uh, ankles and stuff that they do with the foot, my roommate, he's the biggest, biggest Chicago Bulls fan in the world. Like, he is diehard Chicago Bulls. And I always make fun he's of him. He's a big him. bear guy? Yeah. 
Oh God, he loves the Bears. Like, oh, I think he follows me on Twitter. I think his name is like Dynasty something football, but uh, his name's Pete. Um, I'm not gonna give out his last name, but his name is Pete. Poor but Pete's probably still having a pretty shitty day. <laughs> oh my God! Like, yeah, I've been texting him and blowing him out because he's out of town right now. But did you see how that kicker lost the game for him? He totally just straight what? booed. Oh, straight yeah. booed. <laughs> Two bars, not just one bar, not one post or one crossbar. He hit post crossbar out. Man, he ain't gonna be able to show his face anywhere in Chicago. Like, and that's crazy. Yeah, I saw a meme, and it was uh, was it was it Blankman or Blackman, the guy, the Cub fan that caught the ball that should have been an out for the Cubs, and it would like helped them in the playoffs. He cost them like a trip to the World and Series. They put his face on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they like he like had to like vanish. He like went into hiding for years. Like they were like, oh wow, he can finally come out of hiding now because there's someone else Chicago hates even more. I like how he handled. I think it was Parksy or Park or whatever his name is, the kicker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there he is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bird box. But yeah, so I like how he owned it though. He said he's like, I practiced it a million times. I did everything in my power to get it through the field goal. He's like, and it just wasn't good enough tonight. And I, I, I take that loss. So I like that he handled that well. But now today, as we're at today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your poor friend. Uh, uh, now that we're a day <laughs> removed from this game, it's now saying that, and I don't know how they didn't catch it yesterday, but now they're saying it was actually tipped. So it wasn't really his fault. Someone got a hand on the ball. There's like a picture going around where you could see someone's getting like a fingertip that on it. Was, that, I don't believe, that was photoshopped. That was photoshopped. But, right? Because how would you not pick that up yesterday? I'm I'm not even kidding. I love the NFL, but there's some stuff going on this year with the refereeing and just, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. How do you not look at it again to see that he got it shady. tipped? Shady. Shady. There's just no way that should happen. Like, that's. Man, look at you all fancy with the uh, Fuji water up in this bad boy, huh? Yeah, that's right. Fiji Water, give us that sponsorship. What's up? Yeah, I mean, especially you can pay him five dollars a water bottle. You can hook a brother up, hook up the Briscoe and Big Ace show. Come on, right? You know. Plus, it's the most healthy water for you. Yes, and if too, you if you guys want to sponsor that. the show, feel free. I mean, any money that you do sponsor the show, or if you want to donate to the show, it's not going to go in our pocket. All we're going to use with that money is to try to make the show better and try to get better equipment and just to give you guys a better show. And yeah, we're going to start a thing where we're going to start looking for sponsors and start looking for donations. And we're not looking for donations as like we're like begging you or we're trying to put money in our pocket. No. Any donations you guys do to the show, it could be 50 cents or whatever, we're all going to put back into the show. We're going to get better cameras, mm-hmm. better microphone, try to get better guests and try to you know, promote the show better and use the money for advertisement and stuff like that. Because, you know, right now we're just doing a bootleg and we Mm -hmm. like it, you know, we're doing a ghetto style, which, you know, we start from the bottom, you know, we're going to eventually work our way to the top. You know, me and Big Ace always a big fan of, you know, starting from the bottom and working hard, trying to earn our way up to the top. I mean, that's what we got to do. And, you know, I want to see our production value come up way more and everything. And, And unfortunately that needs, you know, we are two working men that this isn't our full-time job, unfortunately, but someday we would love that to be, but we need some help. So, and and you know what, like I said, no money really has to happen. If you want to just subscribe and leave comments and tell people about us, that is enough. But if you feel so inclined, just know it's going back to make sure we're giving you that better product every time. So like you said, truly, we are on the bottom right now. This is where we're starting, but we're going to get to the top. But I don't know if we're going to get to the top like Drake's at the top. And I don't know how long Drake's going to be at the top. Speaking of Drake, well, how about that news I sent to you earlier today? What did you think about that? So here's the story. Uh, Wes sent me the thing today. He's like, did you hear about Drake? I'm like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, go online and look. And uh, there's a Denver uh, newspaper, uh, I believe, is sent out and uh, has an article out from 2010 where Drake has a, a young girl on, right? Where he has a girl on stage, 
Now, guys, everybody, we've all been to concerts. We know how this works. There's a, if it's a male guy, like like Usher would do this at every show. He would get like really into it. But like you see where like all these guys there at one point, they bring a girl on from stage. Even the ladies do it now, like Britney Spears, Janet Jackson, like all these girls beyond. They'll, they'll take a guy from the crowd and come up and they'll sing to him. So he's doing that. He brings this girl up. He's singing to her. He's touching her, rubbing her elbows. And like he kissed her on the lips, right? No, didn't kiss her on the lips. He only kissed her on the neck. Okay, so he kissed her on the neck. He was like, oh, man, you're so hot. But basically, like, he starts to get into it with her and then, like, had to stop and was like, how old are you? She says she's 17. He stops. He's like, oh, snap, I'm not trying to go to jail like that. What, how, why you look like this? You shouldn't be this thick when you're that young and stuff like that. And then, you know, starts. Says, I'm getting bad thoughts. Right. So then, you know, he's like, all right, well, our night. And then he's very nice to her. And, you know, thank you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're a fan. Blah, 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 blah. Kisses her. Go to jail. Yeah, right. Gives her a kiss, whatever. And is like, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks for coming on stage. So now this thing got resurfaced on Twitter. This Denver article came out. I haven't seen how much steams it's picked up since it came out like five hours ago today, but it's probably going to, is it? Okay. So it's probably going to get crazy now for Drake right now. Now I watched the video. You've watched the video or it's two, right? Yep. So now I watching, I'm watching this thing and I'm thinking, all right, all right, all right. And then like, you know, it happens. He finds out she's 17 whatever yeah maybe that's something he should have asked beforehand i don't feel he did anything too crazy now here's the deal i think with this is where i'm gonna argue with you on that one how many like 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 i said bieber does this like like it like bieber was doing this when he first came out with that first album he was like 15. but ace, but ace ace when he was doing it he was younger he was underage himself so you can't say that Listen, I agree with you a little bit, but I'm going to argue with you on this. At this day and age, before he even sang to her, he should have asked her, how old are you? Just to start it up and before he even engaged anything in this day and age because he's such a big superstar. Well, then I feel, but this is also nine years ago where, I mean, he probably wasn't as big as he is now then. Even though now he does it and it's going to be on. For nine years. Come on now. No, 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 he's been huge for at least over 12 years now. Come on now. I mean, he was famous when he was dancing for Mickey Mouse now. Come on now. Don't I mean, about yeah. that. He claims to be a thug, but he'd be up uh, dancing on Mickey Mouse or whatever show he was on, Nickelodeon. Yeah, he, was on he was on Nickelodeon, right, or something? Yeah, that was a Degrassi or something. My only thing yeah. is, first of all, he's not the one probably picking the girl out. You know what I mean? Like, he's got someone else doing that. He's too busy up there during the show. No, he is. And if he is picking the girl out, like, you're doing it on the spot. He, you know, it'd be weird to all of a sudden be like, hang on. Let me see your ID. No, 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 no. Stop. No. He could easily be with some swag and be like, hey, what's your name? Oh, da, 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 yeah. What's your age? Oh, okay, you're 17. Thanks for yeah. He could have easily done that. He could have easily snuck in and like, hey, what's your name? Oh, you're whatever. How old are you? Da da da. And then started singing to her. You know what I mean? He right. could have. That's how a real professional would have. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, he's way more professional than me. I mean, he makes millions and millions. But for me, that's what I would have done. I would have been like, hey, what's your name? And then I would have been like, oh, how old are you? And then. Whenever they would have gave me the age, I would have picked on my attitude or how I would act towards mm-hmm. people. But of course, this girl's dressed like a uh, Instagram supermodel, you know, with a big old booty and looking good. And of course, you know, <clears throat> he maybe thought she was older. <clears throat> but the way he reacted afterwards, he still kind of hit it on, still kept hitting on it. Instead mm-hmm. of like when he was, she should have stopped. I don't know. It, you guys tell us what you guys think. We'd like to, again, hear your guys' opinion because we're a show that we want to have everyone interacting in. Yeah, I feel like he just got caught in a weird situation. You know, I feel like it probably hadn't happened to that point. It happened that night, and then he was like, oh, crap. Crazy. You know what I mean? But, I mean, like, the thing Crazy. is, but the thing is, it's like, you're going to dig this up after nine flipping years? Like, that's what I have a problem with. 
like like the like, like the Kevin Hart Oscar situation that happened a few weeks ago. Let it Ellen, go. Did you hear about Ellen? Like all the Ellen's fans yelling at Ellen because Ellen stuck up for him. So everyone, like all Ellen's fans, are like hitting on Ellen. But Ellen still staying strong on saying Kevin should do it. Well, and that's because you know she knows him personally on a personal level, so she can vouch for him when it's like. He doesn't think like that anymore. Those were thought. And let's all be honest. Everybody's had to go through a change in their life where it's like you may have had one thought or outlook on something. And 10 years later, it's completely changed because you've had to go through experiences where you've got to deal with it. So the fact, though, that something that long ago is costing people their jobs now. Their family. How about their kid? Yeah. You know, it's it's like. Plus, plus, it's like with the Kevin Hart situation. It's like, come on, like, really look at what he does. Look what he does. The guy doesn't have probably time to sleep. He's working. He's making money for himself, his friends, his family. He's got them all working for him. This guy runs like he gives money to charities. Like, no, tomorrow if he's out and about, he never shuns fans. The guy is on twenty four seven, and you're gonna like bring this up and be like, "Ah, he probably shouldn't be on the Oscars." Right after he got, and that's a dream of his was to host that it. That was one of his, yeah, Ace. That was one of his dreams, right? Like that's it's crazy, man. Like, you know. It, it, and now we don't know what's gonna happen with Drake. It may just blow over in a day or two. But you know, if all of a sudden like his album sells tank because of this, it's like, come on. Who, who are these people that goes back this long and just looks through like Kevin Hart made a good comment when he was talking about it. He's like, I'm on my social media every day, all day. So you mean to tell me that I did like 50,000 tweets in the last year and someone went or in the last few years, someone went back and ciphered through 50,000 tweets just to find the one tweet on there where I made one root, one off hand comment. Like, who are these people that is doing that? That's my he's question. A comedian too. I mean, he, he like he's used to pushing the lines and saying outrageous stuff. You know, he's a comedian. That's his, like kind of his job. And it, it is a job. <sighs> I have a real big problem with that too, and I don't want to get too far into it because I'll start really ranting. I used to do stand up comedy for like six months in my life. I was an open micer. Six micer-er. months in your life. <laughs> I was an open micer, and I honestly, wanna, I wasn't I wanna, horrible. Wanna, What's please, please? No, you, I know you're smiling because you know I'm gonna ask. You yeah, don't give, ask me to tell a joke. You gotta give me a joke. Like yes, 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 yes. It doesn't yes, work yes, like that. Yes, yes, it does, guys. I know. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I can give you some examples here, but let me get finish my rant before I forget, though. But like that was the thing is like for those six months, I got to know other people in this area that were comics. And just meeting other comics and talking to them with the podcasting stuff I've done. It's amazing talking to these people that they don't like the people who watch them don't get it where it's like, you guys, just because they're saying this doesn't mean like they're make their job is to joke about it and make you laugh about it. There's no truth to this. And if there is truth, they're giving you a funnier side of it. Exactly. Instead, though, you you're, you're just like, oh, you hate black people because of what you just said. It's like, no, that ain't what, what? No, that wasn't even what was being implied. What What are you talking about? You know what I mean? And then people are like, well, that should be off limits. No, no. Oh, you hate women. Yeah, there's just in a, in the world of comedy, stand up comedy, because it's such an art and craft because it takes balls to go on that stage and be the only one in a room with a microphone and just eyes on you in a dead quiet room. You're the monkey. Everybody's looking at you saying dance monkey. You know well, what I mean? Did you hear about that? Did you hear about the uh, female comedian in Miami getting booed off her stage? I did not. Yes, yeah, she. Oh man, I don't know if you have your phone handy, but you should Google it. But yeah, it is actually. Uh, I guess she says it's because she went out partying all night and just did not like. She partied all night and like, she apologized, but uh, yeah, she fully tanked and got booed off stage. Wow. See, and that's She's crazy because I've gotten to see. Though. I've gotten to see like really like local local comics that I did open mic tonight with. To I've gotten to go see comics live. You know, I've seen Joe Rogan live, Gabriel Glacius live, Bill Burr live. I've seen I got to I see Charlie Murphy live. Charlie Murphy. Yeah, rest in peace. I got to see uh Doug Stanhope. 
live when he could be selling out theaters and he was playing our local comedy club, which was like 150 people. And it was amazing. He flamed through the whole night. I saw uh, a couple of months ago, I went and saw um, Tracy Morgan. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah, no, I used to do stand up. I I really enjoyed it. It's something that I'd like to get back to. My favorite thing that I wrote, and I would never, ever use it again at the time I used it again. This is, what are we, 2019? So this was probably 2011, 2012, maybe. So, like, a long time ago. Um, My favorite, again, I won't use it anymore because then I realized it was very similar to a Joe Rogan bit. And I was like, if I ever started getting paid, I would not want that coming out because it sounded too similar. Uh, But I did a bit about, you know, the PSA is about smoking weed. Like, uh, don't smoke weed, whatever. They had the one where the girl is high in her kitchen and the dog comes in the kitchen and like sits down on the, like on the counter. And it's like, just starts talking to her. And it's like, Oh, Sally, you're not the same anymore. Ever since you started smoking weed, you don't have time for me. You never throw the ball. You never take me for walks. And she's just staring at it. So my thing is, I was like, um, I don't get how we're putting money. Like the government is putting money into pain for these PSAs when that is not what that commercial is doing. That's making you want to buy what she's smoking because your goddamn <laughs> dog is talking to you. Oh my God. And then I start talking about how forget that I need that dealer's number. And then I'm going to the damn zoo and I'm going to go watch the dolphin show and see what the hell they always talking about. You know, and I start doing like a conversation where I'm like, Flipper, Flipper, what's up, man? And he's all like, yo, watch me do this flip or some shit. Like, that was my favorite. But like I said, Joe Rogan had something very similar about that same PSA. And I saw it like probably two years after I did that, at, was doing that during my open mic sets. So I stopped doing it. Um, and then I had another one because I'm half Mexican. No one ever believes it. I look like I'm a short, fat, lucky uh, right. charm guy. What's that? Mexican with red hair. We do exist. I'm living proof. But I would talk about how, like, you know, Mexican parties are crazy. They don't, you know, you don't even need a good reason to have a party. Like, you can have a baby shower and there's going to be like three kegs there, you know. And then I talk about how if you ever get invited to a Mexican party, though, make sure you come safe because you never what's going to know what's going to pop off. Best bet is to, you know, duct tape some phone books around your waist there before you go in. Someone's probably going to get stabbed. Uh, I did that. I had a, yeah, I had some other stuff. I made fun of like affliction shirts. That's that could never get old. Just making fun of affliction. Yeah, shirts. it didn't. It didn't. I did it in a yeah, room where there was like two guys and they almost like killed me. I did a bit about Stevie Wonder because I had just watched his concert on TV. And there was a point where they let Stevie Wonder get up and like walk between his pianos. <laughs> and, uh, I was, How would they do that to Stevie? That's what I said. I was like, who the hell's letting Stevie walk around stage? Like, you know, the band <laughs> members are behind him. Like, no, sit. Don't get out, Stevie. Sit the fuck down, Stevie. Someone go get him. You know, because he's just like off them. But yeah, so I mean. That's, oh, he's so good. Obviously, there would be more structure to it when I'm on stage and, you know, more a little more animation going on with me. But yeah, man, like I've always thought about getting back into it. I just haven't done it. I don't have time. <laughs> this is where I get you know, to do it now. Get the show, yeah, we're trying to get the show popping. You know, but yeah, uh, comedy though is because it's one of those things. Like I can come home, wrestling and comedy are my two, and music are my two things. If I come home having a shit day, either put wrestling on, put a stand up special on, or put some live, watch some live music on on like YouTube, and I'm yeah. good. I, give me ten minutes, I'm good. Donnie. Have you heard uh, Dolph Ziggler's Little Brothers comedy? I have not. I've heard a little bit of Dolph Ziggler's comedy. Yeah, uh, Dolph's little brother, hot young uh, uh, Riley. He's uh, really, really funny. Where is he out of L.A.? Yeah, he's out of L. LA, LA, yeah, he's out of uh, California, L.A. But uh, he's he's super funny. He's someone you guys got to check out. Uh, he does a lot of funny uh, skits on his social media. He's another guy that we'll have on our podcast. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We were in uh, developmental together, but uh, 
super funny dude and uh i can't wait to have him on the podcast he'll be there. hell yeah dude that's awesome i'm gonna give a shout out since you're doing it, i'm gonna give a shout out to my boy uh john russell who's a stand-up comedian in the twin cities area we did radio up, together john? Yeah, he's the guy that actually got me to go on stage the very first time because I was always like, I'll just do it next week because I'd always go with him and he'd do it. And I'm like, I'll go with next week. And finally, he just put my name on the list and they were like, all right, yeah, but you're up. Was, but huh? it's how good of an experience was that? And like, like you guys, you should get out of your comfort zone. Like, that's so good that you actually did that. Like, you probably learned so much from that. Well, and like I said, this guy is the reason I did it because he finally put my name on the list. They came by, the manager came by, and he's like, you're second. And I was like, what? I didn't sign up. And that's when John, my buddy, is like, listen, you keep coming and you keep saying next week. Either you're going to do it or you're not. So shit or get off the pot. Yeah. You're right. No so I did it. And and next thing you know, six months later, I was still doing it. And then I just didn't have time with work and that. But the cool thing about John that I want to say is he does amazing voices. If you've listened to our shows and you hear the very, very beginning where it says it's the Briscoe and Big A show, that ain't me. I can't sound that good. That's hey, my dude. boy John Russell doing some voice work for us. So big shout out for uh, to him for recording those for us. Yeah, thank you, John. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for making the big, the Briscoe and Big A show so, so pretty. Let me ask you this, Wes. Do you like some good comedy involved with your wrestling? Like you uh, see, like Cole Cabana, you see Grado or whatever. I like Cole Cabana. You know I what like I mean? And they're funny. They're they're, you know, comic wrestlers. Yeah, and they put the but they put it in the right spots though. Mm -hmm. Cabana Star puts on a hell of a match, and Star works really hard, but he puts the comedy in the right spots of the match. And you know, even Tommy Dreamer is pretty funny. Like I wrestled yeah. Tommy Dreamer a couple of times, and he throws some comedy in there. Yeah, Tommy is amazing. You know, you always see those spots where people are trying to get some some comedy or some laugh out of it. And I feel like we saw an example of that this weekend uh, in the wrestling world at a local, uh, at, not not local here, but just at an indie show. Please tell me you're not bringing this up. Please tell me you're not bringing this up. I mean, up. like, how do you feel? How did that sit with you when you saw, and I'm sorry that I don't have it in front of me, but I, and I cannot remember her name. I'll look, I'll look for it right now while we, we talk about this. I know she was on the Mae Young Classic, but uh, yeah, she pulled a used tampon out and put it in her opponent's mouth. What do you think? I'm disgusted of it. Just you people talking. All that's why I had my hands over my eyes. Should have been over my ears, but I already saw it. Um, oh, okay, by the way, guys. her name was Pris is Priscilla Kelly. Yeah, and like she's a great worker, and she doesn't need to do something like that. Guys, you might hate me for this, but I'm going to give you my honest opinion. I feel like there's no need for that. I feel like she's doing something just to get shock value. I mean, I can stick my finger up my butt and put it on underneath someone's nose and get shock value of it. But why would I do that? You know, right. like I like Joey Ryan stuff and Joey Ryan's my boy. He puts it in the right spots, but Joey Ryan stuff is not that. I don't think it's that vulgar. Like, Getting a used bloody tampon and putting it out and putting it in your opponent's mouth. Just to me is, I think there has to be a line. I mean, what's it going to get to? Do I have to bring a gun and shoot someone? Do I got to put my finger up my butt, wiggle it around, pull it out, and smear it all over someone's face just to get just to get over? Like, what, what draws the line, Ace? What do you think is eventually going to draw the line and just say, you know what, come on now, like, I love. I think Joey Ryan's stuff is perfect. I don't. I don't believe his stuff is over gross or anything that he doesn't do anything that's like, like really nasty or like vulgar. All this stuff is still PG in a way. I don't really see his not being PG. But I feel like her stuff. I mean, I'm not hating on the girl. I respect her work and I respect her. But I just feel like, for me. <laughs> It's one of those things where it's, I think she felt maybe, I don't even want to say that because I don't know what she was thinking yeah, from what I read in the know. interview that she did right after or the next day. I mean, she even said, she's like, there wasn't much thought put into it. It was just like, 
yeah, this would be something we could do. So let's do it. Like, you know, she had, wasn't. Hey, hey, stop. There had have been some thought. <laughs> I Like I said, but that's why I brought up the comedy element, because I think that she thought that might get laughs. But that, I mean, that's just, I. that's never, I mean, like you said, it'd be one thing to pull a tampon out and throw it at her or something, but like, you, yeah, you put it in her mouth? Like, that was, and in the video, like, I'm sorry, she was digging for way too long in her trunks for that thing. Like it was like well, it was probably wedged up deep inside. That <laughs> it was bad like, boy. all right, what's going on? Plus, I mean, she was on that May the May Young Classic this last round. I, I think she only lasted one round, but it was a good match. I mean, all yeah, those matches really are always girl. Good. like you said. Talented. There's just there would really probably wasn't no need for this spot, and for whatever reason, these two the two work. They two thought it was going to be funny, and they went with it. And well, I mean, I guess it's getting over because we're talking about it, and the whole world's talking about it. So I guess right. she got what she wanted, you know. Right, but I mean, there was other things too that happened in wrestling this weekend that were way less vulgar, uh, such as the uh, Impact Homecoming uh, show, the big show. I'm going to just run down. I'm going to let you know who won. You let me know if you got anything you want to say about these matches as we go, and then we'll we'll move off this one quick. We got other stuff to talk about. So uh, let's see. Rich Swan defeated Ethan Page, Trey Miguel, Jake uh, Christ in an ultimate X match for the X Division Championship. Was Trip Beretta in that one? Who? Trip Beretta. I don't know his no. new name. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe. I, thought, I don't know. I saw that he's back. I thought I saw that he was on Impact or he did one of their pay per views. Okay. Uh, next match is Sue Young and Allie defeat Kira Hogan and uh, Jordan Grace. Jordan, they, Jordan Grace, I think is how she says it. Also, at the end of that match, Rosemary made her return to yes, Impact. Yes, big shout out to Rosemary. She's a sweetheart. And Dude, one I love college. Rosemary. Me too. Rosemary is one of my favorite. I love, I watch every match she does. She's one talented female. Her and Allie have quite the great chemistry too. I like the demon bunny aspect. I just like it because they're so opposite. But uh, Eddie Edwards defeated Moose in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Okay, that I wonder how that match was. I'm gonna have to uh, watch that one. Yeah, I'd like to see that one. Sammy Callahan defeated Willie Mack. Ooh, man! Big shout out to my boy Willie Mack, boy. Even though he lost that one, Willie Mack's my boy. Big yep. shout out to me, AKA Willie Mack, the smooth man out of Compton, <laughs> downtown LA, just creeping and beeping, boy. That's my homie <laughs> right there. Nice. Well, maybe we'll have to see if you want to come on sometime. Uh, Eli Drake defeated Abyss in a Monsters Ball match. Oh, a lot of a lot of weapons involved. It looked like on that one. We've got LAX defeated the Lucha Bros to retain the Impact Tag Team Championships. Mm -hmm. Man, they've been they've been uh, tag team champs for a while, and keep they keep uh, putting the titles on those guys. They're doing something big, huh? Yeah, we got Taya of Valkyrie defeating like, Tessa yeah. Blanchard. Yeah, but shocks out to Tessa. Uh, yeah, Gil Kim was the special referee. Johnny Impact defe uh, defeated Brian Cage to retain the Impact Boom. World Championship. Johnny Mundo, Johnny Nitro, John Morrison. If he ever comes back to WWE, I hope they don't let him use John Morrison because I think he needs a fourth name. Uh, I should, no, I think it should be Johnny Mundo Morrison. Impact. Impact. Oh. I like it. I That's his name for our show from now on. If we ever talk about him, he gets referred as that. Remember that, that, everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, those were the results from Impact Big Show down in Nashville. Uh, the birth or the, the original home of yeah, Impact. The actual, yeah. mm -hmm. That's where yeah. the headquarters are. Too. So that happened. We also had All Elite with tons of more. Wes, this thing's getting crazy, man. This All Elite yeah. wrestling is getting nuts. They're signing people. They're signing people apparently to WWE caliber deals is what's being said. They are in talks with TBS and TNT right now. Uh, Jim Ross is no longer not saying no, but he still ain't saying he's involved. Chris Jericho, again, is not saying no, but or isn't saying no, but still hasn't said he's involved, but it's really pointing to like he is. They just signed, oh, who do uh, SCU sign, I think, today? 
Brandy Rhodes, Cody, the Young Bucks, Adam Page have all signed. Now, the big one right now, oh, okay. obviously. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. They all signed. It's their company. I know, I know. <laughs> but apparently when they announced it on the first, the Young Bucks actually hadn't signed the contract yet is what okay. was going around. But they have now. But the big thing right now, too, uh, besides all this other stuff about how there's talks of this TV deal, there's talks of um, Britt Baker, I think is her name. I think she was the first non-already elite per- or first lady maybe that now brandy Rhodes was but i think she signed there was also i can't remember who else signed but there was someone else that was like their first non-elite member to sign but the big thing right now huge speculation we'll see what you say kenny omega officially done with new japan wrestling should be going to all elite wrestling everything should point that way he's been with them forever he's yeah. part of the elite he helped big time with all in he would probably be doing you know wrestling as well as some backstage stuff with them but now it's being reported that in the last few days wwe has all of a sudden came out of nowhere with some crazy good deal to try to get kenny yes so there's this there's this debate now on well he hasn't signed with all elite wwe came in with this crazy last second offer what's he gonna do now what i have heard who knows if it's true, but I want to say this was off of Meltzer, um, that there was no cre- – he probably wouldn't get the creative control. That wasn't in the contract that he would get Negative. with, obviously, his friends. But still, it was a crazy good offer, more you know, more than they're just offering anybody else right now. Like, obviously, probably wow. big time, straight to main roster, I'm guessing. Big money. Wow. I'll be good. I mean, I would like to – you know, I don't know. I'd like to see him there, but I'd also like to see him – too and the uh, all in stuff and the elite stuff just because you know how talented he is and how much he can help the younger talent involved and get better yeah so it, a lot of people are really literally talking about that again apparently they've been meeting with uh i think it's time warner who owns yeah. tnt yep. and uh tbs so they're in talks with them right now Apparently, there's some more uh, stuff. Let me pull up. I just because I'd feel bad if we don't talk about if they because the signings have been coming out of like left field like crazy. Guys, you guys need to uh, retweet them and tell them you need Wes Briscoe on the squad. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, Hashtag Wes Briscoe all in. Right. That's right. Yeah, we're going to get that. What it, no, it's duh, the double down. Oh, yeah, double down. Double down, all in, Wes Briscoe. I mean, it's crazy just how – and there, there's uh, – they so had, Yeah, and they also – I guess the other thing, too, is they met with New Japan. There was talks about them maybe working together. That is not going to happen. Oh, I think. so they're not going to be like a little sister company kind of? No, probably, New Japan – To be honest with you, that's probably the best. I think so. What do you think, Ace? I think that's the I best. I think so, too, and New Japan's uh, doing that to stay – uh, connected with ROH, yeah, and I think that's just a good relationship. Why ruin it right now? Ruining it, and I'm not saying that this is like a gamble, like it won't work. I think if these guys put their mind to it and get the things in line, like we talked about last episode, yeah. this could become very big. Yeah, but I mean, really- like you said, you got something good going already. Keep writing that out till you know for sure what's happening. Exactly. You know. I agree. You, you, you're not just one guy who's like trying to sign with a company, you know, when it's coming company to company, like you don't want to ruin those relationships until you have for certain what you're getting back out of that deal. If you leave it, you know? Yeah. So I, I can see how they have to wait on that. Yeah. I feel like all elite, if it gets to the point where it gets though, I feel like they're the guys that might try to bring everybody together. I feel like they would be the ones to be like ROH impact, yeah, new Japan, Okay, well, here's the thing. How do you look at this? Then what makes those other companies special? What makes well, I'm not, companies yeah. special than all of that? No, here's, uh, and I, I agree that you just start watering it down. But my question is, what if they did, just throwing this out there, now that there's talk of this other promotion? Hmm? I don't like it. You know, like, well, no, what I was going to say is, what if not we're really working together, but once a year, just one super show where you see the okay. dream matches? Okay. I, I, okay, I, okay, I got you on that one, Ace, and I, I think that would be cool. But you I, know think, what I, mean? I think all around, if they're all TV wise, no, but 
But if they do one crazy pay-per-view like a WrestleMania, I agree with you 100%. That would be really, really cool. I like right. that idea. I like that, that idea. And that's what I'd like to see. I would like to see that too. Because then you would so. get the, just the biggest – you could almost do a two-day show and have just the biggest variety of wrestling known to man. You know, I so mean, many different styles. And you, you, you know, I feel New Japan, I feel ROH, I feel Impact, and I feel anybody all elite's going to have. I feel any of the people working in those companies perf- could, could perfectly work with anybody in WWE. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any ta- any room for talk to say that W. Oh well, WWE's guys are you know they're up here and those all no, those guys. Are, no, no. talent bad. wise, I'm they're all here. Yeah. Talent wise, they're all here. Production business all that that's where that starts differing you talent the wise right they're there, all Ace. here and they can kill together yes, Ace, you you're you're right on the ball on that one they're right on the ball on that one so speaking of uh you know everybody getting a chance and working together yeah we teased this last week but last week we had a little thing or was it two weeks ago maybe now we had a little thing going around uh, on, online a little hashtag we created uh a little hashtag give wes a chance yeah, man. You uh, promised the listeners a little more in depth on that. Uh, so let's talk about it. Well, guys, here's the thing: is I believe that I deserve a chance. I'm not. I don't want anything given to me, but I I believe I deserve a chance to go for the NWA Heavyweight Championship. I mean, I'm. You know, my parents have a huge legacy with the NWA, and right now I've proven myself. I made Austin Aries tap out. I beat Marcus Kazar. I've been beating a lot of people all around the world. And I believe that I deserve a chance. You know, I'm, I'm willing to go through anybody to get a chance to get to Nick. I don't mean, you guys don't even have to put me against Nick right away. I'll start from the bottom, from whoever you put me against and work my way all the way up to Nick. But guys, NWA. Give your boy a chance. Give West Briscoe a chance. Just give me one chance just to prove myself. Because I've been proving myself every day, every week. I've been working hard. I've been training hard every single day. And I want to make my uncle proud. My uncle was a two-time NWA heavyweight champion. And I just want a chance, man. I just want the opportunity to prove myself. And hopefully I'll get it, you know. But that's going to take help from you guys, the fans. You know, I, I need all the support and all the wee treats and all the DMs and hollering at the people and trying to make this happen. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm willing to start from the bottom and do whatever I can. But I believe uh, I should get a chance to face Nick. I believe that, too. And I'm going to see how good my video skills are. Probably right around here. Well. Oh. It helps when you back up. Did you know that, Wes? Like yeah. <laughs> Somewhere over here, I'll throw in the hashtag, hopefully. We'll see. This is weird. I'm not used to the video stuff. I will get used to it, though. But again, hashtag give Wes a chance. I agree, too. Legacy. And, you know, someone threw this out there, and it could not. If we can make this happen, Billy Corgan, uh, Nick Aldis, whoever else is involved in NWA right now, I hope you're hearing this because, yeah, give him, give Wes a chance to get the, the chance for that match. But we have such a great opportunity in July where that match could happen, where it all began for NWA. Like the history could be off the chains, the legacy between your your family name and that biz, that comp, that that organization, that title, and then the city where it all began. For a Hall of Fame weekend, I'm just saying the story writes itself, guys. It writes itself. Yep, exactly. Dude, speaking of uh, legacy, and what did you think about the Mayweather fight in Japan? I didn't see it. <laughs> I saw like a clip. I read about it though. I didn't really read too much into the fight, but I read about how people thought it was fixed. I, I, I think it was fixed too. I feel like anything Mayweather does nowadays is fixed. He's uh, he's getting older. He knows that. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. You know, I, I've never been a huge Mayweather guy, partially because I feel him and Pacquiao. 
he ducked Pacquiao for the longest time. There was always an excuse. There was always an excuse. Once they got to the, you know, what it was years, he ducked him. They finally get to the point where the fight's happening, and it's like he's out of his prime. Pacquiao's out of, he's like coming at the, it's right at that tail end of his prime. You're catching him when he's about to hit that downswing. You just want to be the one that sends him there, though. Like, if you'd have took this two, three years ago when it all started really popping off about this is the fight, you two are the fight, it could have gone very differently, but you didn't want to take the fight. You waited for your moment. But you can't, you can't, you still have to give it up to the boy. I mean, he's one of the greatest boxer ever. One of the greatest boxers ever. One of the greatest businessmen ever. I mean, the guy knows how to get paid. Guy knows how to get paid. Anything he does or is involved with, he knows how to get paid. What do you think about the way he spends his money? I mean, how crazy is that? I'm like, how crazy is the way he spends his money? I, I can only dream what it would be like to have to have just the opportunity to be like. I'm going to spend money like it don't mean nothing because I just have more it's money. Nothing. It's so you know what I mean? Like, oh, hey, did I just run out of money? No. Nope. Hang on. Got more stacks in this pocket. Oh, no. No, he, no, he don't even put it in his pocket. He carries so much. Yeah. He carries a duffel bag and has one of the security guys carries the duffel bag around. Yeah. Dude, I've been in Vegas when it's a fight weekend. I didn't go to his fight, but we were there like in the town. And we were like right across from the venue, and it was like nuts, dude. It was I could only, nuts. I could only imagine, dude. It was crazy, but I respect the man. I just my thing though is it's like, dude, you 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 kind of helped keep yourself on tap by just not fighting, yeah. and not well, fighting I, the people you could have. I definitely think it was a work though, because now they're talking about how Pacquiao and him might have a rematch, and it's like nobody cares. No, Nobody no. cares. And Dude, people, that people, like you said, that he knows he can get by with. He's not picking nobody that's going to be super challenging. He's only going to pick, you know, guys that are like, because he doesn't want to get hurt. I mean, I don't know how old Mayweather is, but he's getting to the age where, you know, one big blow from a, you know, young stud could knock his uh, career really quick. Well, and I think that's why we haven't seen a, a, a rematch with him and McGregor. No, and then too, I was listening to some stuff. McGregor's coach was talking about how if McGregor, if UFC tries to put McGregor with just like some young stud, that he doesn't want him to fight. Yeah, it's pretty crazy yeah. that, that he's like, you know, he has a family, has all this money. He's kind of hasn't been training for that long. Who knows with the suspension? Because you know he's going to get suspended oh, for all yeah. that stuff he's done. So he's going to be out for a while. So, you know, like let's say he's been, you know, he hasn't fought in forever. So then he comes back, you know, four, five years, six years later. Oh, I don't, I don't see it, you know. Ugh. I just don't see him being too pretty. Of course, we all want to see it because we want to see him pass the torch to the next generation. But, man, he's been out of the game, man, and he's been partying and living a pretty crazy life. He has two kids, a beautiful wife, all the money in the world. His whiskey is selling outrageous numbers. Yeah, this guy is good. Like, he can stop now. He's good for life. He'll always have a, a steady flow of money. He was, a, he, again, like Mayweather. Very smart businessman. But yeah, I mean, you can see after that Mayweather fight, you could you, you could see that it was just you saw the writing on the wall. You knew he wasn't gonna come in and start taking on like the top of the top that's in UFC that really should be challenging him. You knew he was gonna come in and be pretty careful about who he's going against. I, mean, I am surprised that he took the fight against the dude that he threw the shit at, but I that I think that one was literally like, Hey, you, there's just no way you can't take this fight. The money's there. Yeah, well, that Russian ain't no joke, man. That mm-hmm. ain't no joke. That dude is a straight stud. And he's been a stud his whole entire life. And, boy, he don't play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't play in Russia. <laughs> right? <laughs> they if don't you watch Rocky, around. you know. <laughs> yes. Except for Rocky's a little off because they're more training in the cold, no technology, no nothing out in the snow with whips just drilling the people. Yeah, but yeah, so that's, man, I don't know. I really don't know about McGregor Mayweather. Like, 
yeah, I'm good with them not fighting ever again in their respective uh, why, sports. Why, why risk the brain trauma? Well, then it's like let someone else come up. Let's well, like I said, let's get some new trauma, here. Man, you know, especially at that age. You I know, it's the brain dealing with that yeah. brain trauma. To be honest with you, Ace, that's what I really, really like. Why risk? I mean, the, you got to think. I mean, those fighters they deal with some crazy brain issues, mm -hmm. and all it takes is. One kick, one punch, and you're talking funny. You have Parkinson's. What, what was it? What did Muhammad Ali have? Do you have Parkinson's or where he just like constantly shake because of getting hit so many times? I think that that and dementia. Yeah. Maybe. Just like why, 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 why risk it? You know, he's already, he's already a legend. He's already stamped his approval on MMA. He's already. Bam! You can't say anything about him. He is a stud. He's fought everybody. He's fought the top boxer. He's fought the top guys and beat them all. You know, he mm -hmm. is, there's nothing you can say about him. So if he retired, he lived up. I mean, there ain't really too much more he can really accomplish. If you really look at it, he's won both titles. He's been the champ. He fought the best boxer and hung with him. Didn't get knocked out. Lasted all the rounds with him. You know what I mean? Like he's stamped his approval. If he wants to move on to other adventures and grow as a human being and expand, kind of like The Rock did, more power to him. Let the man mm -hmm. expand his, you know, life. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I agree. Well, my friend Wes, I mean, that about wraps up episode number man, this six. Was, this was a fun one. This was That's a fun right. one. This That's one. right. So, guys, you all need to remember itunes you know click subscribe write a review please rate us when you do that in the itunes it helps the algorithm whatever that crap is but either way it gets apple's attention they start pushing us out a little bit more to other people too uh stitcher radio you can also go to Lipson and look us up uh spotify i believe google play um possibly i'm working on hopefully maybe getting us on iheart somewhat soon i don't know if yes, that one will happen they're hard to get their stuff into they sometimes let other shows in. Not all the time, though. Uh, and there's some other places, too. Uh, but YouTube is another great one as well. If you don't want to just listen, you want to watch and see our beautiful faces. Or his, yeah. His is probably better. It, the, sorry that it stuck on me for that, though. Uh, yeah. If you want to see our faces, we can watch us right here on uh, YouTube. Look, hey, you can even see the cat that always bites Aww. all my stuff. Discount. Yeah, he's dumb. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, check us out on there. Social media. We are on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, gang, just gang. search Briscoe and big a show. Wes, you got anything coming up? Yes. I got a bunch of stuff coming up, but also please get me in. Try to fans retweet hashtag double or nothing. West Briscoe. And then hashtag give West Briscoe a chance. Hit up the NWA, Billy Corrigan, all those people, man. Get Wes Briscoe into the mix, man. And that takes with all you guys, the fans and everybody helping and supporting. And again, hit our like button, comment our stuff. I got Atomic Wrestling uh, this Thursday. Then I got a show, Platinum Wrestling, down in South Florida. Uh, next weekend, I got a bunch of stuff coming up, guys. And we'll be dropping another podcast very, very soon. And we will definitely have a guest. I'm not going to mention any names, so you guys stay tuned. We'll probably mention the guest name. Probably, I'm guessing, Ace, would you want to do it? Maybe in the middle of the week, we'll announce the uh, guest that we wanted to have on the show. Yeah, that sounds like a good thing. All right. All middle right. of the week. We'll go, uh, or I'll, I'll probably put this episode out on a Thursday, so maybe uh, then we can also say look forward to this, too. Yeah, so definitely check our Twitter and our Instagram. We'll definitely be, you know telling you guys who the guests we are and then we'll also be you know throwing up pictures of the guest and some of the stuff that the guest has achieved and stuff like that so man check out our social media check out our twitter check out our youtube just please guys just check us out hit the like button you know give us a comment share subscribe you know help your boys out you know we're starting from the bottom we're doing this bootleg we're doing this gangster style you know ghetto style but, you know, eventually we want to get there, man. And that takes the work of all of us together, you know. We want to make the best show. So please comment. Send us messages. Tell us what you guys would like to hear. Tell us what we're doing good. Tell us what we're doing bad. We want to hear from you guys, you know. You guys are what's going to help make this show better. And we want to get better. So please, guys, we love you. Please support us. 